A new triathlon bike has landed, the Cube Arium C68X. It has achieved so much already, yet it's been completely redesigned. Enhanced aerodynamics, integrated disc brakes, improved position setup, but above all, it's the fluid and storage integration that has really caught my eye. Is this the most race ready, off the shelf and integrated triathlon bike we have ever seen? Now I was, and I still am of course, a huge Raylert Brothers fan. I've admired and idolized Andreas and Michael Raylert my entire triathlon career. In fact, I remember Andreas rocking up to Kona way back in 2016 on a prototype Cube Arium C68. The brothers had worked closely with Cube on the design of that bike at the time. And there was just nothing like that bike at the time. It was absolutely groundbreaking revolutionary. Now, some seven years on, and well, the frame shape hasn't actually changed a great deal. You can still see that initial blueprint from that Cubarium C68 in this bike, which is testament to the work and the testing they did way back then at the time. Of course, there are some changes though. What has changed a lot is their fluid and storage integration because brands are starting to realize that it's all very well designing a nice looking and aerodynamic bike. But once you hand it over to the athlete, they're then having to add numerous bottles and bento boxes and other fluid and storage options onto the bike, which may well outdo many of the aero gains that they found in the wind tunnel. So the bike needs to be race ready off the shelf. Those fluid and storage options need to be integrated and designed into the frame from the outset and that is what Cube have aimed to achieve with their new Cube Arium C68X and to better understand what's kind of gone into this bike and how it all works we're actually going to head out to Germany to the Cube HQ to have a good old chat with their designers and engineers and just generally have a little look around their HQ so come on got a flight to catch So this is Cube. I was hoping for slightly nicer weather, but this is where it all started back in 1993, some 30 years ago in this small town of Waldershof. Marcus Purner began building bikes in his father's furniture factory on this exact site. And well, the rest is history. But you're not here for a history lesson today, so let's head on inside to find out more about the bikes and what goes into the making of them. really excited about this next bit. Stood in front of an autoclave here. We're now heading into the carbon lab where they do a lot of research and custom parts for the likes of Lucy. Come on in. First things first, we're meeting up now with Andreas, who is the sponsorship manager. You look after the pro athletes like Lucy and Fred, but also you are just generally, well, you've got your ear to the ground within the triathlon worlds and listening to what the athletes are after, what they want, and hopefully bringing that into the bikes and their design. So can you talk me through what the aim or the ambition was with this development of the C68 X? Yes. Sure, so um, the goal we had in mind when developing the bike was to make it as flexible, as adaptable as possible to every kind of athlete. So we had not only the long distance athlete in mind, but also the short distance athletes. So it means the bike is as adaptable as possible to whether you are racing sprint distance, middle distance or long distance. And how did you go about that then? What is it that you... So there's a lot of different options you can race the bike. So as we see it in the background, um, that's kind of the plain version, the basic version, which is super clean and only has an hydration system coming out of the, the bottom bracket section um, with a bladder to the extensions. And then you can completely change it to the yeah, full camelback option, which means um, having two different hydration system, having a storage next to the front hydration system, and you can basically take everything with you you need for the race day. So what's the maximum that it can take fluid-wise on race day as it, yeah. you know, as it is off the shelf? 
Yeah, so the, the hydration system in, in the down tube or close to the bottom bracket um, is, um, takes up to at least or minimum 750 milliliters, um, depending on which frame size you're on. So for the bigger frames, frame sizes like M and L, it's even more than 750 milliliters. And the front hydration system is always 750 milliliters. But the most important part of both of them, they are both refillable. So it means you can refill both of them on the go, so before the race and of course on the go during the race. Pro athletes are always an important yeah, part of the feedback we receive from, from, the, from the triathletes or from the athletes. And um, especially Lucy, is, she's keen to be um, as um, independent as possible, meaning she wants to take as much as possible with her so that she doesn't need to go to any traffic in the aid, sta aid station or something like that. Um, and that's why we kind of wanted to give her the option to, to take as much as possible with her, but also have the option to refill wherever she wants to. And surely that's um, been quite uh, a, a difficulty in itself, just trying to, I mean, you've got so much storage in such a confined area and also a bento box, trying to be able to refill both um, hydration. Yeah. So, so initially the plan wasn't really to have a, the bladder on the downtime refill, down refillable. Um, the basic plan was to have a storage down there and now you have the option to either use it as a storage or you put the bladder in and have it refillable, um, which is which was a big task, but it was like ideas from the pros getting into the process of development. So we started having their or we implemented their ideas to the new hydration system. What most of the athletes or our pro athletes who already tested the bike do is like having two different kind of uh, hydration setups. So one is just the, the source of energy and one is then for hydrating with water and, and isotonic drinks. And obviously since the previous bike, we've had a lot of developments in the cycling triathlon world. We've got disc brakes, athletes riding larger tires, lower pressures. How have you accommodated that then? Yeah, so previous times, most of our athletes were going 23-25 combination, um, front and rear wheel. Um, now, the, most of them are riding a 25-28 combination, um, which is currently tested the fastest, also in our tests. Um, but yeah, to be as comfortable as possible, we also have the option to use uh, 28 in the front and 30 millimeters in the back. We integrated the front mag into the frame, so that's for the two by system. And as soon as you switch to a one by system, which a lot of the athletes do currently, um, there is a cover coming with the bike, um, which you can put in the, in the position where the front mag sits normally. And then you have a completely flat surface area, um, which is even faster than, um, especially as there is no wind flow um, being redirected anywhere. Easy. Well, now we've had an overview of the bike, its design and what they aim to achieve with that. Now, let's find out how they made this happen by chatting to one of the engineers. So we're here now with Bunt, the head of R&D and kind of the man behind the Arium C68X. But I actually kind of want to backtrack a slight amount here to talk actually about the this C68 and how we eventually got to the C68X. Because as I've mentioned already, that C68 was quite a breakthrough bike. Definitely, yeah. It was like a big milestone for, for us as the company. And we're, as we were working a long time on triathlon bikes, but it was a yeah, really new iconic shape uh, and um, aerodynamic mega huge step. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah. And what are the notable parts on that? Because it was like, it just was such a revolutionary sort of shape. Yeah. Um, you had that kind of large section down towards the bottom bracket, which obviously we still have, right. and that twin right. tube section. So what are the reasonings behind those sections on the frame? Yeah, we really started on a white piece of paper for the new bike. We also dropped limitations like UCI regulations. So because we wanted to have no limits we wanted yeah, to have a pure tri bike. Pure triathlon bike and, and be the fastest bike you can ever have. And um, this was the reason we started. And um, step by step, we, we developed this shape. And uh, the bottom bracket section is, is quite huge, but it has a, a big aerodynamic effect. So then the twin tube section, again, that's. Yeah. It's not really on another bike. So, what is the yeah. reasoning for that? 
Yeah, this we also tried in the wind tunnel and it was the idea to, to give you more stability on um, side wind conditions to make you hold in your position, your aero position as long as possible to keep you fast. And uh, this was yeah, proved in the wind tunnel that you have a certain air flow through the gap um, in high wind conditions, which helps the bike to be more stable. Cool. And then fast forward now to the C68X. And obviously you've just gone full board with trying to get integration and storage into the bike, essentially making it a race ready bike. So what have you had to work on? What are the challenges that you faced when trying to design and build that? Yeah. So yeah, the challenge was we wanted to keep the aerodynamic performance, which is really, really good. And um, maybe to make it even better, but we know when we add disc brakes, it might be a challenge in the beginning. But we then put all the bits and pieces and puzzle together, worked on every and each detail. And, and also it was like the requirement from our customers to put in the triangle above the BB um, hydration or spare um, was that we had to enlarge the system, which might be a, a penalty aerodynamic wise, but all the other bits and pieces and details made it yeah, even more powerful than the one before. So how did you overcome that issue of um, potentially compromising the stiffness or the stability of the bike in that yeah. bottom bracket area? So the, the wider section actually helps to make it more stiff, more stable. And the, the material um, combination we use, we call C68X, makes it also possible to, to um, put the stiffness exactly where we need it with not using more material. And this is the, um, the secret behind C60X, so to cut material uh, where we don't need it with some special moves inside and um, having a really good stiffness, a really good weight and the stiffness exactly where we need it. Yeah, and then obviously you've got the hydration system down the bottom and with the straw coming up the down tube, which right. is quite a long way. Um, yeah. Were there any complications with that? Because that's it's quite a long way to sort of almost you know suck the fluid through and it's, out. It's quite a long way, but we did uh, a lot of testing for it. It was also one of the first ideas to, to use the second part of the twin head tube to guide through the, the um, straw. But we dropped the idea and put everything before because there was much more space. Yeah, it was too limited in the aero profile. So, um, but in the end, the, we we move the whole front section of the fork more to the back, and this makes us more room for the straw and for the hydration system and also for the refill option. Okay, so from the outside. Most of it really looks the same other than a slightly wider area down by the bottom bracket. Is there anything else that has changed? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, um, But actually just the front hydration system and the seat post is the same. All other parts, so the handlebar, the frame, the fork have new profiles, which we, where we did a lot of um, flow simulation and proved also in, within the wind tunnel. Um, that the, the new profiles are working because we, we wanted to, to bring the aerodynamics to the next level. Um, so the handlebar is much smaller, it has a more aero, um, ergonomic shape on the bar ends um, and the whole head tube area is much narrower. Um, so it's a really thin um, where we had on the previous model the brake and this section we can reduce or we had um, we reduced a lot. Um, and also the fork and the brake integration into the fork is a lot of detailed work and, and you, you realize when you compare one by one, you see a lot of differences. Yeah. So whilst the engineers had a great bike to work from, they've still managed to improve on the already impressive numbers of the outgoing model. The C68X is 3.68 watts faster than the previous C68, and they've managed to reduce the weight further by 18%. So the bike, without the in-frame hydration, is just 9.1 kilograms. But what impressed me the most about this bike, aside from the insane paint job, 
is the integration. I know I've mentioned it a few times already, but it really is next level. It's so well thought through. It's got everything covered for all distances, all setup needs, and it does so without compromising the aerodynamics. All of this can be stripped off for a super sleek setup, perhaps suited to time trials or short distance events. Or you can access the frame hydration bladder, which has the option to be refillable or not. Then of course, you can bring the refillable front hydration in, which slides neatly onto a bracket on the stem, again, with the option to use the in-frame hydration or not. And then there is the bento box to store gels and whatnot. This this also has the option to feed the straw of the in-frame hydration through and, wait for it, can be refilled through the bento box too. Pretty impressive if you ask me. So the bike can literally be raced as it was intended, how it's aerodynamically tested to perform. I'd actually argue that other than perhaps an optional aero bottle on the down tube, you really wouldn't need anything more, even for an iron distance event. Now, another notable update to this bike has to be its adjustability. We now have a zero to 20 degree tilt on the aero bars, as well as coming with numerous extended spaces and brackets so you can get that absolute desired and accurate fit that you need. We've got a ton of adjustability and options on the positions of the aero cups and also coming with an additional bracket so that you can change the position of the aero bars closer or wider. And not forgetting also that you can purchase the bike with a different base bar option so you can go higher or lower as I have. And finally, of course, we've had a big upgrade on the braking with disc brakes, now giving you that little bit more confidence into the corners or on a technical course, all whilst being aerodynamically integrated. Now the bike I'm actually riding and have with me here today is their top model. It's the same model that you'll see the likes of Lucy Charles Barkley riding. It's the C68X SLT. It comes equipped with Shimano Dura-Ace Di2 12-speed. We've also got these profile design aero bars, the 43 ASC with that nice angle on there. We've got the forearm rest and nice ergonomic grip. We've also got 80 mil front and rear wheels from Newman, the advanced SLR80 stream wheels. And then we also have a slightly lower spec model, which is the C68X SLX, which comes equipped with a SRAM Axis 12 speed and a 65 mil front and 80 mil rear in the same Newman model. And then we also have a frame set available. Well, honestly, I've got to say, I am super impressed with this design of the bike and I've thoroughly enjoyed riding it today. It, I mean, considering it is an aero machine, it, it's surprisingly nimble and the fact that I literally just jumped on this today, I felt incredibly comfortable on it, which says a lot really. Being able to stay in the aero bars and lay down the power can make a massive, massive difference. But anyway, it's enough of me gawping over the bike. I'd love to hear what you have to think about it. So let us know in the comments section down below and what do you think to this paintwork as well? It's a bit awesome. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please do give it a thumbs up, give it a like. Do you reckon we've got time to get another lap in before we have to hand this back? Yeah. Right. See you soon. Cheers.